Elaine Young was blonde, pretty, and popular with a wealthy father that worked in Hollywood. But no matter what she had, no matter the success she found in her work, she felt that it wasn't enough and she couldn't compare to the other gorgeous women that were living in Beverly Hills. When she learned about silicone injections, Elaine thought she finally found her answer, a way to keep up with the other beautiful people around her. After about three years of injections though, she realized that the silicone in her face seemed to be moving and growing. She told the New York Times that she became, quote, ugly and grotesque. And when she tried to alert her doctor, he stopped returning her calls. Elaine tried speaking to other doctors, but they didn't know how to help her. In fact, the silicone in her face had become so hard that it was impossible to remove and a different doctor injected steroids to try and reduce the inflammation. It wasn't a long-term solution though. And the pain in Elaine's face became excruciating as the silicone grew up into her eye. As for that initial doctor, the one that injected her in the first place, he had taken his life and both his practice and reputation were in ruins. Elaine not only had no form of recourse against him, but she needed multiple surgeries, including fascia transplants to undo the years long damage. A modern horror story, right? Well, not exactly. This story comes from a 1988 New York Times article. And so that means things have drastically changed since then, right? Regulations are for the better and this would never happen in the modern day. Also, no, not exactly. 90s era supermodel Linda Evangelista told the world in 2021 that the side effects from a fat freezing procedure left her brutally disfigured and totally unrecognizable, leading to depression. After two unsuccessful surgeries, she explained on Instagram that her livelihood had been completely destroyed. Linda filed a lawsuit against Zeltique Aesthetics who conducted the procedure seeking $50 million. Not only were they responsible for personal damages according to Linda, but they ruined her lucrative modeling career too. This lawsuit was settled just last year in 2022 for an undisclosed amount. And while Linda may have had some form of recourse here, her frustration isn't unfamiliar. I mean, we have an entire television program devoted to failed surgeries called Botched. And the people that appear on this reality program aren't always well-known celebrities, but lesser known actresses, models, or everyday people that thought plastic surgery could just enhance their appearance. Cosmetic surgery is becoming more and more common and more accepted in everyday life and by everyday folks, but this isn't inherently a bad thing. If you think elective surgery is right for you, then that's completely your call to make. However, the way these surgeries are marketed, presented, and regulated, well, that can be a bad thing. And that's what we're going to dig into on today's episode of Dark Dives. It's impossible to pinpoint any one particular thing as the reason for the rise in cosmetic surgeries, but there are a few factors worth considering. For one, surgeries and laser techniques have improved drastically. While these procedures aren't without potential side effects, they are safer and with shorter hospital stays. Even despite the current state of the economy, the demand has risen. Older millennials are more open about their choice to seek plastic surgery. COVID allowed people more time to heal if they wanted something done. And the same age group is also having children, meaning more requests for tummy tucks, breast lifts, and things of that nature. But if most of these surgeries were new parents wanting a bit of a makeover, we probably wouldn't be here. Hopefully, if you're out there making the decision to have a child, you're perfectly capable of deciding whether or not to have elective cosmetic surgery too. Instead, we've also seen a rise in young influencers getting these types of surgeries. According to NBC News, surgeons and clinics will even offer influencers these services for cheap in exchange for promotion. Effectively, their new face and new body becomes like a billboard, a form of advertisement for these clinicians. That alone isn't a foreign concept either. When famous people wear a brand name of clothing, makeup, jewelry, or even get a tattoo, they're putting a stamp of approval on a brand or artist to some extent. There's still something a bit icky about it being plastic surgery that's offered to young influencers who by extent promote these services to their young audiences, like, you know, teenage girls. Anna, 19 years old at the time of the article, told NBC that she started an OnlyFans the moment on her 18th birthday and got lip filler for about $1,200. She also got a lip blush procedure, which apparently deposits like a reddish pink pigment into your lips for around $200 in return for a TikTok about the process. Anna knows this can be a difficult topic to navigate and explains that she is as open as possible without flaunting. She told NBC, quote, I know a lot of my audience is younger girls and I don't want to flex. Like I got popular off OnlyFans and now I get all this free stuff. This attitude does seem like a healthy one, 
but not all people act or react the same way Anna does to this industry. Many young creators are getting everything from lip filler to surgeries at discounts in exchange for promotion. And many of the social media personalities that NBC spoke to have expressed regret. Half of the influencers they talked to described feeling addicted to body modification, quote, if you have an iPhone, it has affected you, Sebastian Bales, a TikTok star with 12.8 million followers said. He said he got his first cosmetic procedure, lip filler injections, when he was 18. I got my lips done, not because I was insecure, but because I was offered free lips, he said. Who is going to say no to free lips? And no, I'm not going to go all Aunt Sally Mae Pearl Clutcher on you and say, think of the children. The fact is that Sebastian is not a child and he's free to make his own decisions. For example, not everyone gets tattoos that have some personal deep meaning and some people don't get tattoos at all. Sometimes you just wanna get a tattoo to have one and that's a cosmetic procedure too. Maybe we're not all that far off from having plastic surgery parlors and getting your lips done won't be any you know, stigmatic thing. It'll just be a normal Tuesday afternoon. I feel like to some extent people are already kind of at that point, which I think is pretty cool. Now we do currently have something a lot like that with medical spas, but I'll get to that in a moment. Now, besides, NBC spoke to 12 influencers and by no means is that any representation of an entire online community, not by a long shot. But I still think it's fair to argue that it isn't exactly healthy either. The thing is, if you see an influencer get a tattoo, you might think, oh, that's a really nice piece of art or something, but not like they're changing their body. It's not like planting a seed to young followers that, hey, if you don't like your appearance, go ahead and alter it. The fact of the matter is that being blunt here, many teenagers are extremely insecure. I'm pretty sure teenagers have been insecure since the beginning of time. And sometimes that feeling really doesn't go away. Many of you probably have something you'd change about your body and it's a very normal human feeling. That's why seeing so many young people with body dysmorphia comparing themselves to others is quite worrying. It's not just a matter of Photoshop. Instead, it's a matter of, I want to get lip filler to look like XYZ influencer, or if I get a butt lift, maybe I'll be more like Y influencer. Board certified plastic surgeons like Dr. Stephen Williams in Oakland, California said that patients seeking filler are younger and younger. He explained that social media does far more than set an unattainable goal. I'm sure we've all heard the term unrealistic beauty standards before, even if people have just been joking around about it. But social media can underplay the seriousness of these procedures and trivialize the effects on people's health. There's a reason plastic surgery parlors really shouldn't exist, even if your favorite influencers might not talk about it. The BBL or Brazilian butt lift has been around for quite some time. It's always had some dangers associated with it, like if reinjected fat into the buttock ends up dying through fat necrosis, or if silicone shots lead to severe infection or blockage. It can also be difficult to know where you're injecting the fat. According to the New York Times, doctors have mistakenly injected fat into the gluteal muscle or below it, leading to fat traveling directly into the heart and lungs, causing near immediate death. But despite these risks, the BBL has become more and more popular with people traveling all over the world to get this surgery for cheap. And unfortunately, cheaper doesn't mean better. Many women traveled to Turkey or South America for their BBL procedures. And with the mortality rate of the surgery being roughly two in every 6,000 procedures, some of the fatalities can be traced back to these cheaper clinics. Though the surgery can be done safely, people are still dying at quote, chop shops, all to obtain this hourglass sought after Jessica Rabbit look or of course, maybe a Kim Kardashian look, who's been seen as one of the biggest inspiration for BBLs out there. And now as she's losing weight, perhaps one of the biggest inspirations to lose it too. Now, if you're all right with those odds and you wanna get the surgery done, then you know far be it from me to tell you what to do with your own body. It's just worth recognizing that the risks, statistics, and complications aren't nearly as glamorous as the results are often posted online. Young content creators, at least from what I've seen, stress to their audiences that life is too short to not be happy with how you look. And if you're looking to get cosmetic work done, then just go for it. While promoting loving your body and doing what you feel is right for you is an important message, it does seem to drown out any other messages of the dangers associated with this, the recovery time, and of course, the importance of researching your clinician. Plus, if these creators have young audiences, it's also worth mentioning that insecurities are an unfortunate part of life. Cosmetic procedures, given their risks, probably should not be your first choice, especially if the only reason someone is unhappy is because they're comparing themselves to others. Comparison really is the thief of joy. It's also worth noting that some influencers like Sebastian Bales have expressed regret about getting so much work done, and it's not something you can really take back. 
He says he's positive that one of his teenage followers has probably gotten work done because of his promotions and his fans are typically just 12 to 16 years old. That's not to say that, oh yeah, a 12 year old has definitely gotten intensive surgery by watching Sebastian, but kids are considering cosmetic procedures younger and younger. The FDA hasn't even technically approved the use of filler for some of the influencers that are getting them either, with these fillers only being approved for 22 year olds and up. NBC explains that adults over the age of 22 can safely absorb the compounds, but younger patients can receive off-label fillers that aren't covered by FDA guidelines. This doesn't mean that off-label fillers are automatically terrible. It's not some of the eerie, questionable black market deal because of that, but it does mean that medical spas, which are loosely regulated to begin with, are using these off-label fillers that are also loosely regulated. Does it always spell instant disaster? No but I'd prefer these industries injecting things into people's faces to just have a couple more eyes on them, you know? Hell, even if you want to dissolve your facial fillers, you've got to be wary of that too. One young woman, Agnes, decided to go through the process of dissolving to get rid of her dermal lip filler and after her injection, woke to bone crushing pain. She also suffered permanent nerve damage and degraded connective tissues, as well as a quote, mystery autoimmune issue. But hey, because this is off-brand, it's essentially up to the doctor's discretion on how to use it. And according to Agnes, the issue is compounded by a lack of informed consent, with some doctors providing little to no warning of the risks or complications involved with dissolving treatments. Other women that have gone through these dissolving treatments say that their face is now aging rapidly and they've experienced medical gaslighting when they try to seek help. Quote, on one trip to emergency at a Melbourne hospital, Agnes said a doctor told her, you're still pretty, go home and get some sleep. She said doctors dismissed her illness as dysmorphia, which left her isolated and cut off from her family support systems. I was told point blank that it's not possible. I was told that it must be something else and that's just happened to happen around the same time. It was a way of saying a woman is experiencing some kind of hysteria instead of doctors just saying, we simply don't know. In other words, not only do you really have to do your research and be wary of off-brands if you want filler, but the industry that removes this filler can have the same problem. And these aren't even necessarily the extreme surgeries. This is a little pick-me-up, you know, a small dermal lip filler. Yet the consequences can be so severe. So then why are we marketing this to teenagers? Technically speaking, TikTok doesn't actually allow cosmetic procedures or providers to advertise through their official ads program. Australian health regulators have also made it known that they seriously do not approve of these surgeons posting whatsoever. They actually banned Dr. Daniel Aronoff, who became incredibly famous on TikTok from cosmetic surgery as a whole. He had 13 million followers and regularly posted funny and informative content. But once it was revealed that he worked at a clinic that breached hygiene and safety regulations, he was ordered to take it all down. Mixing TikTok and surgery doesn't seem to work well for a number of reasons. One patient told the Australian show A Current Affair that she was left with pain and a lump after her facelift, stating, he's in the middle of surgery and he is stopping, checking the video, then saying, no, I don't want that, cut that out, do it again. Doctors chatting about these procedures on TikTok is still popular though, even if plastic surgeons don't advertise themselves. Hashtags like plastic surgery and lip filler had about 26 billion views a year ago, and more influencers are documenting their positive journey. It's almost like a way of getting around that advertising loophole for these clinics. If they give TikTok stars or Instagram models free surgery in exchange for some posts and videos, then they're advertising their service without breaking TOS. After all, what better way to get free promotion than by putting a reputable, beautiful person out there? Not only does it send the message to teens that, wow, you can look just like Ashley Swan or whoever you may want that got that lip fillers, but you can see the gorgeous results too. This just doesn't necessarily tell the whole side of the story, like Ashley explaining that free filler isn't always a good idea, or how Kristen Gunn, a Texan medical spa owner, calls social media advertisements an unregulated wild west. Not that Gunn doesn't use this benefit for herself, might I add. Some articles portray it almost like a weird symbiotic relationship, which while it may feel a bit dystopian, it isn't entirely far from the truth either. The fact of the matter is the more beautiful an influencer is, the more they'll get noticed, the more followers they'll receive and the more sponsorships they'll get. What better way to be more beautiful than with cosmetic surgery? Maybe you could get more lipstick brands to notice you with better lip filler or something. I don't know, I'm not part of that world. I quite like my sharp triangular edges, thank you. But it's not hard to see the appeal even as an outsider. 
Now, the ethics may not be evil, but I'm not about to sit here and condemn anyone that's ever gotten a free plastic surgery procedure. But unless this is all extremely transparent, then I, I think, yeah, it can get really shady really fast. TikTok might say that they want users to disclose branded content, but they even say that they take steps to address that when they discover that is the case. So how many times do they never find out? What about when clinics say their services are comped or gifted, which only heavily compels an influencer to pay them back with a post? There's no contract amending they do this. It was merely a thank you, right? One New York-based beauty editor anonymously told Insider that it's an invisible contract, a wink and a nod type deal. Invisible pen and paper contracts are murky enough to navigate, but this, it's kind of no wonder things move downhill quickly. And again, this is all assuming that an influencer even tells their audience they got surgery to begin with. Disclosing this is a controversial topic in of itself. Some believe that no one, celebrity or otherwise, owes the world their medical history. Others believe it's unethical not to disclose. While I've even seen a Daily Beast article accusing YouTubers of oversharing their surgical experiences. In my personal opinion, I think it's a balance. Does anyone owe you an explanation for why they may have needed or wanted a nose job? I don't think so. Should a celebrity that sells lip plumper claim that they got the look naturally and deny that they had lip filler for years? Probably not. And if you're literally selling your image as an ideal and then lying about your appearance, that's also not the way to go. It's the same as Photoshopping pictures or slapping on a filter and tagging it, hashtag no makeup. It's tacky and the literal definition of an unrealistic beauty standard, and it's harmful. But online, it can be hard to tell what's real and what isn't. With cosmetic procedures becoming so common and insecure celebrities staying quiet about the work they've done, I'd say remembering not to compare yourself to others is more crucial than ever. And that's without even talking about like the, the face tuning filters and stuff where they like make your nose like freaking tiny and put this highlighter like line down your nose and give you the cheekbones and big eyes and whatever the hell, like that's ignoring that problem entirely too. And truthfully, I know it's so much easier said than done. And I also, from time to time, find myself looking at some of these like Instagram models and stuff and going like, God damn, maybe that kind of person does exist IRL. And thankfully uh, there is a subreddit called r slash Instagram reality. It has really helped give me some perspective and remember that everyone is human, everyone has imperfections. And it's really great when they find these photos of influencers and celebrities and even everyday folks that show the Photoshopped and unphotoshopped versions. It's really Really refreshing to see because it's a great reminder that, hey, you're not actually fucked up, you're just human. But there is one more important question to ask here. What about the regulation of these products and procedures? With demand on the rise, who's supplying it? While the regulation around invasive surgeries is plain and simple, a licensed physician regulated by a state medical board must perform them, the Botox and filler side of things isn't nearly as clear. According to NBC, there is no federal oversight in this arena and non-surgical treatments can be performed by unlicensed people, with data showing that about 36% of medical spas operate without a medical director entirely. Even when doctors are on staff, they might be on site less than half the time they operate. Again, this doesn't make these medical spas automatically terrible, but slowly and surely, regulations and standards seem to get looser and looser as state authorities can't keep up with the massive growth. Med spas have fallen into a regulatory gray area and action, while it can be taken against unlicensed locations, is pretty rare. NCBI has also published a study showing that med spas have far more complications than you'd think. In 2020, they wrote, of all cosmetic complications encountered in the past two years, the majority reported that the percentage of complications seen in their practice attributable to medical spas ranged from 61% to 100%, 100%. That means that the vast majority of all these complications, almost all of them came from these cosmetic procedure to go shops. These complications are typically burns, discolorations, and misplacement of product. It seems ridiculous that these places are still in operation with those kinds of numbers, or at the very least, that there aren't more laws in place to protect consumers. Unfortunately, we have seen this before. An industry booms so fast that regulation just can't keep up. Dietary supplements is one industry that's also its own little wild, wild west cesspool, and there's a lot of disturbing things that someone can do with AI too. Apparently, some sickos on the internet have used it to create CP, which thankfully is obviously punishable by law, but the point remains the same. When there's new technology, pretty much no matter what it may be, there will always be someone to exploit it and take advantage of it. At least the solution is simple enough. Make sure the person you're seeing is a doctor and move on. End of story, have a nice day, thanks for watching. Yeah? 
But wait, no, it's not. Because when are these episodes ever that simple, honestly? Even board certification may not be enough to ensure that you're actually getting the best care possible. Joan, who works at a financial services firm, got a facelift and tummy tuck from a board certified doctor in Beverly Hills. The doctor she got it from had all these diplomas and certifications on the wall. He was the real deal. So imagine her surprise when she had thick scars and what the New York Times calls a wavy abdomen. I'm not 100% sure what that means. Like, I don't know if she turned into Elastigirl or something, but the point is the results were not what Joan wanted and it took that negative experience for her to realize why. Her surgeon specialized in ear, nose, and throat, not plastic surgery. Maybe he would have been the perfect man to help her with an ear infection or a nose job, but this doctor was not the person to carefully remove unwanted fat and stitch delicate skin. If you ask me, it seems like this doctor and others like him are merely trying to capitalize on a booming industry and using their certification to gain trust and clients, whether or not they actually specialize in plastic surgery. It is also worth noting that this article came out in 2012, over 10 years ago at this point. So there are likely even more doctors that are doing this exact same thing. As the New York Times explains, there are no laws in the United States that require doctors to practice only within their speciality. So this is actually perfectly legal. Whether or not it's ethical is still up for debate. Some practitioners say that plastic surgeons are basically gatekeeping by not approving of other doctors doing these surgeries, but there are genuine reasons for the concern in bouncing around specialities too. Michael Freeland, a medical malpractice lawyer, says that he's seen a steady rise in the number of patients incapacitated or fatally injured by cosmetic surgery. Plus, since doctors that perform cosmetic procedures don't have to report complications, there's almost no way in really knowing just how often things go wrong. Friedland explained, quote, "'Not only are the doctors not properly trained in plastic surgery, but they are operating in facilities like tanning salons and med spas that are not equipped to handle a medical emergency. The best they can do for you if things go wrong is call 911, and sometimes they don't even do that.'" It also doesn't help that insurance isn't involved either, as health insurance certainly does not cover a facelift for purely cosmetic reasons. Without them and without regulations, saying be careful doesn't really feel like enough. CNN called plastic surgery the wild west of medicine in 2012, leading with a story of a woman whose breast implants were lodged in her armpits. Plastic surgery practice said it all the way back in 2007 when Kanye West's mom was found in respiratory arrest after an abdominoplasty and breast reduction. The Guardian said it in 2021 when discussing the Evangelista case we mentioned earlier, and the Sydney Morning Herald said it just last year. So please, if you're considering any kind of cosmetic surgery or procedure, please research your clinic and doctor make sure you check what they actually specialize in. Talk to their previous clients if you see people promoting them. Look up the side effects and ask yourself why you're even getting this done in the first place. Because permanent disfigurement is not worth temporary beauty. But with all of that being said, that is where we are going to end today's episode of Dark Dives. I hope you learned something new here today. And if you did, make sure that you're liking, following, and subscribing to stay up to date with all the latest information. I really appreciate you spending some of your time here with me today. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.